is micro strategy the next short squeeze? I wanted to make this video specifically after my last video, which was on meme stocks and why I think they're not a real movement. Um, I think in the very beginning, when you caught the hedge funds off guard with GameStop and AMC, that was beautiful. And it could be considered somewhat of a movement because then the hedge funds are afraid to take advantage of their position and have these synthetic shorts. And now they're afraid of being caught off guard by the retail audience that gets together like they did in Reddit. I think that's a beautiful thing. Like, I'm not opposed to that. But what I, my point is, is if you think that it's actually going to change the banking system, I hate to inform you, but it's really this simple. Like, if we're in a debate and somebody's debating me, and I mean, I've heard some lofty figures with this AMC crowd. Uh, you know, it's going to get to $50 trillion. The global financial asset space is $900 trillion. So to think it's going to get to $50 trillion, but some people really think that. I mean, AMC is like a $20 billion stock and GameStop's like a $15 billion stock. But some people think it could really get to $50 trillion just AMC. So there's that. But the main thing I would say in a debate is just who has custody of these shares. If it's going to be worth so much money per share, who has custody of these shares? Because when I have my Bitcoin, I have custody of it. I actually have it on a device and I have custody of it. Nobody else does. Only I do. That is is tr truly being sovereign. If you really want to have a difference or you really want to be independent uh, and sovereign, you're a reserve bank. You take custody of your money. It's that simple. It's not saying I'm going to go short AMC or I'm going to go short GameStop. That would be foolish. I, I would never go short. I mean, honestly, being a short is like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller because your upside is extremely limited. Um, you have unlimited upside if you are betting long on something and very limited upside when you're betting on something go down. So not only with like a put option, for example, you have an expiration date and your upside is limited. So pretty foolish to go short on anything. So to the people saying, well, I dare you to go short. It's like, no, I'm not. My point is you don't have custody of your AMC shares. And if you have them in Robinhood or something, then it's even worse. So if they made it, the if they already did it where they had a situation where they only allowed you to sell it, they didn't allow you to buy it. They only allowed you to sell it. So what I'm, my point is you have a chain of command in a way where you have it in, in whatever exchange you have it in. So whether it's TD Ameritrade, uh, you know, E-Trade, Robinhood, whatever exchange you have it in, that broker house, you have to sell it from there. Then you have to move it from there somehow into the bank. So you have to do a wire transfer, an ACH, or a mailed check, or whatever that might be. Then you have to go into the actual bank itself. So there's a whole situation there of different chains of custody where you have to realize you don't actually own the shares the exchange does or the broker house does like that's not real ownership that's not really going to change anything but the other aspect is there people go oh well there's only going to be this many shares i hate to break it to you but did you not see what like tesla did they did a five to one split they there they are situations where they will announce secondaries they announce a secondary and then they did a five to one split to cover how much they diluted their stock. So it's like to think AMC isn't going to do a secondary or something like that to dilute the shares. What you want, if you, this is your message in that crowd, what you want to be in is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is ultimately finite at 21 million coins, period. That's it. There is a closed loop. You actually can be self-sovereign. You actually can take the money and own the money. You can actually have your asset and own it. Nobody else can, can have access to it. That is incredible. Now, you can't, what's so incredible, and I'm going to work this into micro strategy, if you can believe it or not. What's so incredible is, is there a stock? Can you take your Apple stock out of the stock market and have custody of your Apple stock? No. It, you, you can't do this with a stock, but you can do this with Bitcoin. You can do this with precious metals. You can do this with collectibles. Anything that you are able to actually take custody of that is very important, especially in, in the world today. That's my whole point. Um, if you want to start a movement, a real movement would be being self-sovereign. In my opinion, I think that could like solve almost all the problems that we have, like a, a very large amount of them, if everybody was capable of having control of their assets. Now, how does this work into... So the first thing is the ability to have custody... That's why I don't believe in meme stocks actually like changing the whole banking system. Um, it just doesn't seem possible to me because you don't actually have custody of these shares. 
Um, and there's all kinds of different things that can happen because you don't have custody of these shares. Um, the other aspect, and it's also in their system still, like when you sell it, if you ever do sell it, you're going to have to put it in a bank. Like there's a whole thing, but then they could do a secondary as well and dilute the shares. So that whole like idea that it, anyway, how does this get into micro strategy? The way this gets into micro strategy is if I didn't already have my actual Bitcoin in cold storage and actually own Bitcoin in cold storage, I wouldn't think this was a good idea. But if you're looking for a short squeeze scenario, micro strategy actually right now, if I look to my little screen right here, it has the the outstanding shares is 9,748,000 shares. And of those shares, uh, roughly 1.46 billion of them is sold short or uh, roughly 2 million of those shares. That equates to 20.52% of the shares of MicroStrategy are shorted. Now, what's so interesting about MicroStrategy is this is like kind of a glorified Bitcoin ETF because they actually have 5.25 billion worth of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Yeah, you heard me right. 5.25 roughly billion of Bitcoin. It's around 108,000 Bitcoin in their balance sheet. So they are extremely uh, solvent uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, they have a lot of Bitcoin and they're a software company on top of that. So what's crazy to think about is their overall market cap, though, is less than seven billion. So if you have five point two five billion in Bitcoin on your balance sheet and you're only valued at seven billion or less than seven billion, somewhere around like six point nine billion. Um, that's an interesting scenario there, because if that underlying asset. Goes up in value, I mean, if, if MicroStrategy was valued at, say, 20 billion, this wouldn't make as much sense. But since it has a 20% short float, so you have a $7 billion stock, 20% of that is shorted. And then the other, you know, yeah, then you have 5.25 billion worth of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. And what happens if Bitcoin happens to go up in price from 48,000? That thing is super cool, by the way. Uh, it's at 48,000 right now. Um, what happens if it goes to, say, 60,000? It goes back to all-time highs, 60, 65,000, right? And you have a 20% short float. And the underlying asset in which they hold is $5.25 billion, And they're currently valued at $7 billion. That would cause a short squeeze, wouldn't it? That's like the first time, it's like the first time in history that there's an underlying asset like Bitcoin on the balance sheet of a company that's a software company that is being shorted to this degree. So the short is basically, I think it would be people that think Bitcoin is going to fail. And so they're shorting MicroStrategy to this amount. But that is very interesting to me because MicroStrategy's market cap is not far enough um, to the point where this wouldn't actually uh, work, which it, the more I think about it, it just seems very obvious that these shorts are in a bad position because really when you're shorting something, like I said earlier in this video, it's like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Um, when you're long, you have unlimited upside. And when you're short, you have a very limited upside. It's it's. So unlimited upside when you're long, very limited upside when you're short. If you're right, you can only make so much. When you're right when you're long, you can make an unlimited amount uh, when you're betting on something to go up. Uh, if you believe in Bitcoin and you have money in the stock market, that is a very interesting scenario there with MicroStrategy. I think that they're trading at quite a discount um, relative to you have that you have Michael Saylor and team that is a software company that is holding five point two five billion worth of Bitcoin. That's interesting to me. So it goes against like everything um, I believe in to say like to have micro strategy stock because I don't believe in any stock. I don't want to have my money in the stock market because if you do have your money in the stock market, um, you don't actually own that money. You don't actually have custody of that money. And I think that's the reason why we're in the problem, the problem that we are in. Um, so I, I really wanted to get that point across on why I am not big on the meme stocks, but I am very interested in micro strategy based on looking at this short float here, based on being bullish on Bitcoin. And I'm going to make another video after this video talking about why I'm bullish on Bitcoin, um, specifically in this environment. There's some very, very interesting stuff going on with miners, very interesting stuff going on um, with them converting their Bitcoin and or con converting their balance sheets to Bitcoin, keeping the Bitcoin that they mine. It's a whole thing, but 
I've never seen something like that with an asset where the miners are actually keeping it on the balance sheet and then leveraging to get more of it on the balance sheet. But that's just one of the aspects I'm going to talk about in the next video about why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin. But if you're bullish on Bitcoin, you're in the stock market. Micro strategy looks very interesting. Not financial advice, but talking about short squeezes here. We've never seen something like that where if the at the asset underlying, I mean, and the other crazy aspect here too is Bitcoin is 24 seven. So <laughs> It could be like a Saturday, Sunday, like say, for example, right now it's Sunday and all of a sudden Sunday night, it goes from 48,000 to like 56,000. Monday morning, the shorts are going to be rushing to cover and triggering a short squeeze. Now, don't believe me? Go back a little bit into Michael, uh, MicroStrategy's chart. If you go back into the chart, let me look over here on the right. I think I got it pulled up. Um. Uh, There we go. So if we look at the year to date in MicroStrategy, it's all time high actually was back in February and it hit in February. It actually had hit like a little bit over 1300. Um, now, at that time, it hit 1300. Bitcoin's price was only around like 44K, 45K. So Bitcoin is higher now and MicroStrategy is currently at 707 a share, but it's all time high of over 1300 was back in February, I believe, what is it, February 9th, uh, February 8th or 9th. But then on February 8th and 9th, uh, Bitcoin was only around 44, 45K. So the only difference that's happened here from it falling from an all-time high back at over 1,300 a share, I think it peaked at 1,315, something like that in the after hours, to falling back to 700 with MicroStrategy, the only thing that changed is they bought more Bitcoin and Bitcoin is at a higher price than it was at MicroStrategy's all-time high. So it's trading at a big discount. So what does that tell you? There was a short squeeze scenario here to get it to 1300 when it had that initial spike uh, up to the, from the low 30s, probably the, the whole Elon Musk situation when Tesla bought 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, got it to have a short squeeze and shoot up because there was a, a different change in the sentiment of Bitcoin. So that just shows you that that short squeeze scenario had already played out with MicroStrategy. Now it's deflated and gone back down to 700. But the only difference from all time high to now is they have more Bitcoin on their balance sheet. <laughs> and Bitcoin is a little bit up from 45K to 48K. I think maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little bit uh, out there, but please tell me your opinion on this in a comment down below. We all love reading the comments down below, so please do make your voice heard. And also, I made a new podcast channel talking about Bitcoin in the first interview that I did with Daniel Joe, a good friend of mine. So I will put the link to my new podcast channel down below. I think it's not searchable because I just dropped the podcast yesterday. So click the link down below. Also on my Instagram, I have a link to it. And on my Twitter, I have a link to the first video I did. Please do subscribe to the new channel. If I get some subscribers over there, some likes over there, some views over there, uh, it'll help that channel actually show up in the algorithm and I really really appreciate it and if you like this video if it was insightful to you please do hit the thumbs up it really means a lot to me and it really helps my videos get out there um, but yeah really interesting scenario with MicroStrategy and the next video I'm going to do is talking about why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin in this current environment right now and I find it to be such an interesting situation but to recap on why and if you haven't watched that video it's the video right before this one is why I, I talked kind of bad about meme stocks um, with AMC and GameStop is just th they're well aware of what's going on at this point. The best thing you can do is find something when, you know, it's, they haven't been caught once they've been caught off guard, they're not going to be caught off guard again. And they think that it's a situation where there won't be a secondary offering or there won't be some sort of situation where, um, they only allow you to sell the stock like they did in the past with Robinhood or whatever it might be. I think that now that the hedge funds are well aware of that, you want to try to find another short situation. But really, the main movement, if you want to have a change in the banking system, it should be self-sovereignty, self-custody, and that should be number one. The only reason I find MicroStrategy to be interesting is because they have so much Bitcoin on their balance sheet. They're a software company. And now there's so much evolving stuff going on in the Bitcoin community, whether that be um, loan programs where you can send your Bitcoin in, get a loan in fiat against your Bitcoin and not have to declare a capital gain. All these types of things will require really good software. And who has 
a very large solvent Bitcoin position, which is going to be hard to get that much Bitcoin on your balance sheet in the future once um, we get to, you know, less of it being available, especially if miners aren't letting go of their Bitcoin. In that scenario, MicroStrategy is really in, in a, a great place. Um, not only are they a software company, but they also have the solvency of having the Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Anyway, that's why I find it to be very interesting. If there is a stock in the stock market that I think is a ripe short squeeze that I think is an interesting stock, it's MicroStrategy. Again, not financial advice, just a YouTuber that wants to get out some information on MicroStrategy. find it to be very interesting. So just a YouTuber, not financial advice. Thank you everybody so much for watching these videos. I will see you at the next one. And I am also going to be making videos a lot more consistent. So thank you for sticking with me. Uh, I needed a little bit of time off to, to restructure things. And I'm back and I plan to be doing a minimum of three videos a week on this channel. And I also want to be dropping one to two interviews a week on the new uh, Rob Soltan show, my new podcast channel, which there will be a link down there in the description. Please do check it out. Please do subscribe and let me know what you think. See you at the next video. Signing out.